my microphone has been recording for several minutes without me knowing, so I'm excited to hear whatever I said to myself. If it's anything funny, I'll put it on Patreon. Anyway, hey, I'm Hannah. I am a self-published indie author, which means that I write, edit, design, publish, market, all my own books. Sometimes I hire other people to do some of those things. There are many aspects of the writing industry to consider if you are an author choosing between self-publishing and traditional publishing. Money is obviously a big factor, how much you'll make with each publishing option, how much you'll spend, how much you'll save. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the cost of self-publishing. We can touch on the money that you make in another video, so so if that's something you're interested in seeing, go ahead and subscribe. I am getting hella Discord notifications right now. What? Oh my goodness, someone posted a picture of a bison. Okay, that was worth it. I've published lots of books in different genres with different pen names, different size platforms, different marketing strategies. So all of this information is from personal experience, the experience of friends that I have that are also writers, and years of research and observation. In this video, we're going to go over the different things that you can expect to pay for if you take the self-publishing route, how much you might be looking at spending on each of those different elements, what I paid to produce the books under this pen name, how to estimate the cost of your own book, tips for keeping costs low if you're working with a tighter budget, and how I self-publish for free under one of my other pen names. So I'll just talk about everything that I do for that process. Self-publishing a book can cost anywhere in a very wide range, but some of the things that you might expect to pay for are editing, cover design, interior formatting, legal and technical things like copyrights, ISBNs, actually publishing your book, stuff like that. And then on kind of the more optional end, you've got stuff like marketing, artwork, graphics. Editing is typically broken down into several different parts. You've got developmental editing, line editing, and then copy editing or proofreading. Those are listed from most to least expensive typically. You can usually hire an editor for somewhere between one and three cents per word. So that would put an 80,000 word book somewhere between like 800 and 2400 dollars. How many of those edits you actually pay for is totally up to you. You might use a friend for proofreading. You might do the line edits yourself. You might not hire an editor at all. You might hire an editor to do all of them for maybe a bundle discount. Cover designs can cost anywhere from like $5 for a pre-made ebook cover to thousands of dollars for a full cover design on an ebook, paperback, hardback, audiobook, maybe the interior designs for all of them. You might also get some marketing imagery like 3D renders. Every designer has different packages. But for your standard multi-format, just a cover design without interior formatting, you're looking to pay between $200 to maybe $1,200. These ranges are wide so it is very customizable. You could also design your own cover, but then that would include costs like your time invested in learning it, maybe software, maybe classes, and you are at risk of a lower quality product unless you are a professional designer already with the knowledge that you need to kind of follow trends in whatever your genre is because that will make a big difference. So designing it yourself is a little riskier because your cover is your number one marketing tool. Formatting the interior of your book might be something that you get bundled with your cover design. So this can cost anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars depending on who you go with and your word count and the elements that are included in your design. I learned to design my own book interiors in Adobe InDesign and I use Skillshare classes for it, specifically Nadege Richards, which I will link in the description and that link can get you you two free weeks of Skillshare if you don't already have an account. And that's plenty of time to take Nadezhda's classes. And you could also take my class on publishing collections if you clicked on this video because you're trying to publish a collection of poems or shorts or essays or whatever. I get really winded when I'm promoting my own stuff. Copyrights. There's a very interesting idea hopping around the indie writer space right now that you don't need to copyright your book because everything you write is automatically copywritten. I don't really have a comment on this, so like, do what you want. Good luck if you have to sue somebody. Getting a work copyrighted is typically around $35 if you're old fashioned and like to protect your creative work. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> ISBNs are your international standard book number. It's the number that's on the barcode on the back of books. It's basically your book's social security number. Your book is the only one that has it. If you're publishing a physical book like a paperback or a hardback, I don't think there's a way around buying an ISBN. And you have to have one for ebooks as well, but if you're publishing through something like KDP, they will supply a free one. I bought a bundle of 10 ISBNs for $2.95, so I'm pretty set. You can buy them one at a time, but I figured that I would publish at least 10 books before I die 
presumably, and it was cheaper to just get 10 of them at once. Then you have the actual cost of publishing and buying author copies. So the price to upload and actually publish your book is gonna depend on the venue that you choose to do it. KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing, formerly known as CreateSpace, is Amazon service for self-publishing, and there is no upfront charge to publish your books with them. Ingram Spark is another popular option. I believe to upload your book initially, it's $40, and then if you have to make any like changes and do subsequent uploads, it's another $40, which is a pain in the ass because if you find a typo and you have to upload a fully new version of your book just to correct a single character and they charge you full price again. I hate Ingram Spark, but we can talk about that another time. So overall for the actual like publishing and making available of your book, you might have to pay a small upfront fee, but most of the print costs are just going to be taken from your sales. So instead of receiving 100% of the revenue from your book sales, you're going to receive a royalty. But your other option is to literally print and ship out individual copies of your book from your house. Basically, author copies refers to when the printer will charge you the cost of production so that you can have a stock of your books either to keep to sell signed copies on your website or to take to live events and sell in person use for giveaways, that type of thing. The price of author copies is gonna depend on the length of your book, the size of your book, the format, like hardcover is way more expensive than paperback, the use of colors in page in the book, etc. I usually keep about 30 of each of my books on hand to sell the signed copies from my website. Marketing is something you might spend no money on. Maybe you can market through your own platform and network so you don't have to actually put money up for marketing, just time. Maybe you don't care how many books you sell. Not every author has the goal to sell as many books as possible. You might want to publish a nonfiction book as a part of like a consultation package or something like that. So marketing should cost you nothing. It could also cost you thousands of dollars. Dealer's choice. So those are the basic spending categories that you can expect. It's kind of hard to nail down the average cost of self-publishing a book. I've seen people do it for as cheap as $100. I've seen some people spend ten dollars to $15,000. Readsy did some estimates by genre of what it would cost to produce and publish an 80,000 word book. The cheapest genre here is romance at $3,819. The most expensive is business, self-help, and health at $6,172. If I had to guess why the last one is the most expensive, I'd say it's due to those genres being much heavier in imageries like graphs and other visual elements, which would make the design and printing much more expensive. I'd also imagine that those books are likelier to need extra steps in the editing process, like industry experts, fact checkers, that type of thing. The genre most comparable to mine on this list is literary fiction at $4,300. I spent much less, but my books are significantly shorter than 80,000 words. Should you be spending thousands of dollars to publish your book? Probably not. You can publish a book quite affordably, actually. Your budget is mostly gonna come down to your goals, your skills, and the money that you have available. <laughs> We're gonna talk more about how to decide what you should spend on a book later on, but first I'm gonna break down what I spent on Little Birds and Starlight. This is just so you have some specifics on what an actual self-published author has spent, and I know that these numbers are accurate because they are mine. <laughs> I had slightly different goals with the budgets for both of my books. For Little Birds, I wanted to produce a book as affordably as I could while still being like as high quality as possible. For Starlight, I had a better idea of how quickly I could make my money back, so, I was a little more generous with my budget. Both of them were pretty cheap to do. For Little Birds, I spent around $500 on the cover and interior design for the ebook and paperback, which is incredibly cheap because it was like a small shop situation. They had pretty low prices because it wasn't very professional. I really liked working with that designer at the time because they were very flexible and they made the exact cover that I wanted. That can kind of be a downside though because I was not an industry expert. I knew much less than I know now and specifically I didn't know about book covers and what was trending at the time. So was it exactly what I wanted? Yes. Was it designed to appeal to my target demographic in the most effective way at that time? Your guess is as good as mine. For Starlight, I hired a different designer and paid around $700 just for the book covers of the ebook and the paperback. That's a lot pricier than my first designer, um, but this one was an established business with super fast turnaround and they had the industry knowledge to make my cover idea better. So I filled out all the information that they asked for, which is like, 
imagery in the book, your subgenres, just like the general vibe of stuff. And I sent them a sketch of what I thought I wanted, which was this. And they sent me this. They also did another version of my orange dream, but it kind of looked too much like a high school Christian devotional. So I went with their design because it did better suit the book. You can see the differences between the first draft and the final version. I really didn't have them change that much. It was just like a few little tweaks. I did the interior design for Starlight myself and spent around $40 on the software. There was also a little time and investment learning how to use the software and how to specifically do the design for like what I wanted the end product to look like. Now I'm pretty set on doing my own interior formatting in the future, so it definitely was a good use of time. And I've gotten several reviews. I didn't ask, but people specifically said that the interior design on Starlight was better than the one on Little Birds. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the product that I came out with. And I was also happy to allocate that money toward having like a better, trendier cover that ultimately will sell more books. Because like I said, your cover is your biggest marketing tool. If you're investing money anywhere, put it on a cover. I used the same editor for both books, which was a friend I made in college. <laughs> I paid more for editing Starlight because I basically had a range of fair prices that isn't taking advantage of either party. For Little Birds, I paid on the lower end of it because I had no idea if I was gonna sell a single copy. But for the second book, I was able to pay on the higher range because I knew that I would make my investment back. Artwork is super optional, but if you've seen my paperbacks, you know that I have some little sketches in there. Both books were by my friend Rosalind, and the cost for artwork was the same deal as my editor where I had a range. I paid on the lower end for Little Birds and I paid on the higher end for Starlight. I love that the artwork is so different between the two. I wouldn't know that they were the same artist if I didn't know that they were the same artist. <laughs> I know a lot of people are very serious about not mixing business and friendship, but what can I say? I paid nothing in marketing for Little Birds. I maybe spent like 20 bucks on the grand prize for the giveaway and then however much for shipping to send out the items from the pre-sale giveaway. But I really just utilized what I had and kind of made do. For Starlight, I did more giveaways. Um, I bought some higher quality items. I also invested a lot more time in promoting Starlight, like doing more interactive giveaways, like we did the Starlight Writing Challenge on Instagram. I did more streams, just more of everything. So I spent a little more money on marketing Starlight, but mostly I spent a lot more time on it because I decided to write at that point. Whenever I published Little Birds, I was just like, here are a bunch of stories I wrote when I was a teenager. I have a lot of time on my hands right now. I'm just gonna try out everything and writing kind of worked for me. So overall, I spent around $900 producing and publishing Little Birds, which I made up in the first couple weeks of pre-sales. And I spent around $1,400 on Starlight, which I made up in the first couple days of pre-sales. So how do you decide what to spend on self-publishing a book? Difficult to say, but I have some questions that might help you narrow down that number. Number one, what is your genre and target word count? The answer to that question will help you estimate your editing and your interior design costs. The longer your book is, the more it'll be. And certain genres will have different expectations for cover matter, so your genre can also affect how much you spend on a cover. In general, you'll spend more money on something like an epic fantasy or a memoir than you would on something like serialized sci-fi or romance. I feel like there are two large types of books and they have their prospective readers. So you've got your consumables. Think of walking down the romance section of a bookstore. Your covers are going to be Amish women in front of blurry farms, shirtless cowboys, etc. The part of the shirtless cowboy that you can see will determine the subgenre of romance, but most of them will have a shirtless cowboy. <laughs> and it's usually like a stock image. Like there are models who take a shit ton of pictures in certain garb and you can buy the rights to that photo, put your title on it, ta-da, it's a book cover. It's the same with serialized sci-fi. Like a sci-fi book, like this is how you lose the time war. When you look at that cover, you can tell that a lot of thought and a ton of money probably went into the design, especially after you've read the book and look back at the cover. Like it's it's a good cover. It's a standalone artistic story that has a lot of intentional prose that obviously also took a lot of time and thought. So the time investment in the book should reflect in the money investment in the cover, if that makes sense. But if you look at one of the Halo novels, which is also sci-fi, clearly serialized, less time went into that cover because there are more books and less regard. Which isn't to say that faster produced books have like no value, but it's almost a different medium. It has a much quicker consumption, so it has a shorter shelf life, so the expectations are a bit different. And of course there's nuance and everything, but to me those are the two big categories of books, so those are the two categories of book design. And it's based on how much you're gonna spend to produce it. So figure out which category your book is supposed to go in and 
plan your budget accordingly. The second question is what does your platform look like? What kind of sales can you expect from your current audience? If the answer is you have no platform, that's totally fine. Just plan accordingly. Um, also maybe start building some kind of platform somewhere. When I published Little Birds, I had a few thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel and I didn't really have a reputation as a writer. So I kept costs as low as I could without producing a completely shitty book. <laughs> when I released Starlight, my platform was about four times as big as it was for Little Birds. I had the numbers from my first book sales to kind of estimate what I'd be making on Starlight. So while I still try to keep my budget low, I was able to invest in a better cover and pay my friends more. <laughs> so take a guess at how many books you think you'll sell based on your current platform. And obviously the more you think you can sell, the more money you could be comfortable allocating toward producing the book. The third question, you should probably ask yourself this first, honestly, but what do you want to accomplish with your book? Not every author is publishing with the intent to sell as many copies as possible. You might not care how many you sell at all. Most people publish books to make money, but you may have written a book to have supplementary material for an online class you made, or a lot of people will self-publish books to essentially use as business cards. So they'll write something in their industry niche and then hand out free copies to potential customers. That's a great self-marketing tool. Or maybe you're just writing it for a very niche group of people or just for your family or just to say that you did it. So determine your specific goals for publishing that book because it will affect how much money you spend on it. What's your intended publishing schedule? I'm including this question because if your business model is to rapid drop a bunch of books, you're not going to spend as much time with editors so you can plan to spend less money on the editing process or more if you want to do an absolute thorough job, but you want it done quickly. You might buy a bundle of pre-made covers. That's something you'll see a lot in erotica and sci-fi and Western and other like little serialized paperbacks. So if you're intending to publish a book every month, your editing and cover design budgets will probably be much smaller than if you're publishing like a 600 page fantasy novel every four years. And number five, how much do you have to allocate to your book? Sometimes it's not a matter of deciding how much you should spend, it's a matter of deciding how much you can spend. If you've got no book budget, there is a finite amount of things that you can do about it. The only advice I have here is planning a publishing schedule and then seeing how much you can save before then. But if you're just starting and you have literally no money to put toward producing your first book, then don't spend money. You can absolutely design an ebook cover with a free version of Canva. Research best design practices, look at other books in your genre, figure out the trends, and do your best. Same with editing and formatting. You might just get some good friends to proofread your book a few times for you. You might do the editing yourself. It's okay to start where you are with what you have and then put a little money aside from that first book to produce your second one. If you're working with a slim budget, I have five tips for making your book as affordable as possible. Number one is to see what other people are doing. If you are trying to reinvent the wheel, you are going to waste a lot of time and energy and money doing it. There is no reason not to look at another author who's already successful in your genre and do what they're doing. If you've got no idea who to hire or what to buy, look at other writers in your genre who are doing it well. If you really like an indie writer or a content creator with books out, they probably have something somewhere that talks about who they hired along the way. I usually don't recommend people unless I know them because um, I hired my original designer and I was perfectly happy with the job that they did, but for my second book, they stole my deposit and never gave it back and went bankrupt. Also, they knew they were going bankrupt when they took my deposit. They were just scamming people. So that was awesome. And I definitely recommended them to several people. So I'm very hesitant to give recommendations now, but a lot of other creators do. So look for videos and look for like lists on their website of people that they use and check them out. Apart from that, be loud about what you're looking for. Let people know that you need a children's book editor who specializes in autism, I don't know. Tweet about it with hashtags, mention it to any friends in the industry and you'll probably get some recommendations without having to spend hours and days and weeks searching for your own resources. Number two, plan ahead. If you know what books you're finishing and publishing and when, you can plan how much money you need to have before then. Don't let it sneak up on you. Tip three is to invest wisely. If you want your book to sell, you need a good cover. Your cover is your biggest marketing tool. It doesn't matter how good your book is. If your cover is shitty, no one is going to buy it. Invest in a good cover and invest in a good editor if you can. I know not everyone can hire an editor right away, but try to give your book the editing attention that it needs to the best of your ability. I know authors with awful books that are selling really well because they have a good cover, a great editor, so the prose is super clean, even if it's not strong, and they have good marketing. It's a technically well-made book. Doesn't mean it's a good book, but it turns out it's kind of hard for the average reader to spot a bad story if it's presented 
flawlessly. So take yourself and your writing seriously by investing in the presentation when you can. Covers and editors are where I would recommend putting your money if you're working with a limited budget. Tip four, service trade. If you're great at writing blurbs and back cover content and you have a friend who's good at designing covers, do that for each other. If you and a writing partner are both great editors, edit each other's books. Because it's really hard to edit your own books, even if you're a professional editor. If you're a professional editor, you know this. But trading favors is a great way to save money when you're starting out, even if it's just trading for a discount. Number five is promos and crowdfunding. If you have a platform, you could trade something like a promotional post for a discount with another company. You can also use your platform to crowdfund. For example, when I started my Patreon, all patrons were included in the special thanks section at the back of Little Birds, and $20 and up, I named a character after them, and I only had like 36 patrons at the time, so that was like a feasible thing for me to do. Patreon is a great way to fund content production, but I've seen other creators literally just do crowdfunding to raise like a bulk amount of money all at once to produce whatever their project is. So if you have a platform and it doesn't really matter how big it is, you have a lot of options. Obviously, it's better to have some money to put toward book production, but you can't always do that for your first book, and you might not want to ever. For one of my pen names, I literally have never spent a dime, and it is my highest selling pen name. So how do I do it for free? I only publish ebooks, so the ISBN is included. I design my own covers, I edit them myself, I get a friend or two to proofread them for me, and I publish through venues that have no upfront cost, I just get royalties. And for marketing, I rely on social media. I don't have very big social media accounts for this pen name, but you Using SEO and using hashtags can get your new publications like enough traction for the sales sites algorithms to kind of kick in. I contact review sites and like content publication calendars in my genre just to get it put out on some different sites. I basically get my book everywhere that I can for free. And that just requires a little bit of research and then like setting aside a day to send out all those applications. Hot tip. Keep a list of places that you have sent books for review or just to post on their website because you'll forget about all of them by the time you go to publish your next book. Don't keep inventing the wheel. Keep notes on your whole process, what worked, what didn't, links, resources, contact information, everything that you used and keep it updated. If you're publishing for free, you're probably publishing a lot of things very quickly. So the more honed you can get your process, the quicker you can make releases and the more money you'll make. Write stuff down. And like I said, I also utilize the SEO and algorithms within the sales site themselves to grow a following there. Another good marketing move, especially if you're selling eBooks, is to go back to your old publications and link your new ones. So a reader finishes a book, they are immediately pushed to another book in the series or to another book in that pen name. Publishing doesn't have to cost anything. People who tell you that it has to be expensive are not very creative people and they're wrong. <laughs> and everything that I just described in publishing a book for free does take skills, but don't let that intimidate you. For example, my cover designs get better with every book and you can always go back and replace your old covers. Same for writing and editing. As you get better at that skill, you can go back and republish better versions of your old work. That's the cool thing about self-publishing. You can start anywhere and you control everything. So you can go and update whatever you'd like. It's totally fine to start imperfectly. You will improve as you do it. Just keep an open mind and be ready to learn. Utilize free education tools. Google things. People don't like Googling things. Just Google things. <laughs> Look at what other people in your genre are doing and take notes. You saw my mock-up for the Starlight cover. It was bad. <laughs> I'm now to the point that I've designed so many books and they're getting so good that I probably will never hire a cover designer again. The next book on this pen name will probably be my own cover design, so look out for that. And that's gonna save me tons of money. So as you can see, publishing a book can cost whatever you want it to. It can be free or it can be $15,000. <laughs> if you've got money to spend, put it toward a good cover and a good editor. Invest at least time in marketing, even if you're not putting money into it. If you're looking to design your own book interior, I really recommend Nadege Richard's classes. I'm gonna link them in the description. If you're looking to publish a collection, go ahead and check out my classes while you're there, especially if you like the budget breakdowns between Starlight and Little Birds, because I really go into detail in that class about the differences between the two publications and why I did it and what worked and what didn't. By the way, I've got a downloadable that I just made on how to write pretty prose, and that'll also be linked in the description if you want to check it out. Otherwise, let me know in a comment what you have spent on publishing books or what you intend to spend. I'd love to have some more insight on how different authors see money investment on their own books. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. There's like a windstorm happening outside, which is the only time that I can film videos, apparently. I hope that tree don't fall on my house. Pay a lot less if you, oh my goodness gracious, can y'all hear that? That tree is gonna fall. <laughs> this is very stressful. Hold on, my dog's choking. Are we good?